right, this morning I want to continue on our Holy Spirit series. And uh, I want to talk about the day of Pentecost this morning. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Did I forget anything, Heidi? <laughs> I don't think I did, but... I want to talk about the day of, uh, of Pentecost. If you want to go over in your Bibles to Luke, I believe it's chapter 24. And whether you've got an iPad or an actual Bible, physical Bible there, either one. And I want to talk about the day of Pentecost. We've been spending quite a bit of time, and through the previous series, we talked about the Holy Spirit is called God. He's eternal. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. We looked at the, some different aspects of the Holy Spirit last week, that He has foreknowledge, that He is love. He prophesies. He's, he's, he's involved and was heavily involved, completely involved in the writing of scriptures. He gives us divine guidance. And then we wrapped up last week looking at John 14, 15, and 16, which are characteristics of the Holy Spirit that the Lord Jesus gave us before he was ascended into heaven. And so this morning, I want to, if you're in Luke 24, I want to begin by looking, just prefacing this before the day of Pentecost, because I want you to see Jesus' words. Um... I should just announce to you, if you're a guest or a visitor, and you know this already because of the transition during worship, but we are a church that believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I pray in other tongues, and by show of hands, is there anybody here? That is, well, looky there, I'm not the only one. <laughs> so, um, and it is a wonderful gift, and I want to present this to you today and, and even pray with you after the service if you'd like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. But I want to show you what Jesus said first, and then just give you some scriptural examples in the book of Acts that talk about this baptism in the Holy Spirit and the importance of it, bringing emphasis to you from the scriptures. Because how many know my opinion, your opinion really doesn't matter? It matters what the Lord said, Amen. You know, sometimes people think, well, our denomination doesn't believe this or that. Well, I would just challenge you in this. If that's the case and you don't believe in this like we do, that's fine. We're not going to hate you. You don't hate us. Amen? And uh, we'll walk in love with one another because this is not a salvation issue, but it is a great help issue if you need help making decisions, if you need help in knowing the will of God. And it is an empowerment issue where you can be clothed with power from on high. And so there's so many aspects to God that, in all honesty, we're not going to figure them all out here. It's just not going to happen. But we can experience God in the promises that he's given us. In fact, uh, the other day I was watching, uh, how many have watched any of the Southwest Believers Convention? You watch any of that? A few of you have. So Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and he had um, Bill Johnson is now one of the speakers in that. Did you know that? That's, that's wonderful. Oh my goodness, I'm like... <laughs> And all the people that wanted to fight Kenneth Copeland versus Bill Johnson, it's over. <laughs> Paul said, you guys are fighting. I'm of Peter. I'm of Paul. I'm of how, you know, it got down to the point, well, I'm of Christ. And other churches aren't. Oh, come on, let's not go there. How about? Okay, I'll get off that soapbox. And because uh, I want to teach the word to you. But I was watching Bill Johnson, he was teaching along, and I always get good things from him, and uh, really appreciate the, the, the gifting that God has put in him to explain and to give. How many know when, you're, you're, when the Holy Spirit is speaking through a minister, it's just like, you just go, oh, there it is, and truth comes out. How many know it's not this, the cage? This is just a cage. You know, I, I, I pluck it, I shave it. You say you pluck it, yeah, I get these hairs. <laughs> I never had them as a kid. Then one day they said, we're tired of the head. Let's grow out his ears. <laughs> Why? I go to get my hair cut. And the haircut lady's like, I'm going to get your eyebrows. And she just, Wah! and so far... The trimmer has not jammed in the middle of them, so I'm thankful for that. <laughs> my grandpa told me that, my dad told me that his dad's dad could take his eyebrows and put them in his mouth. <laughs> Revelation. 
you've been enlightened. And now you know what's wrong with me. All right, so. <laughs> Bill Johnson was speaking, and he didn't even say this. But I heard the Holy Spirit say it while I was watching him. The Holy Spirit spoke to me because he was talking about the importance of having the manifestation of the word and God's presence here on earth. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, Sean, my will is not just on paper. I said, yes, sir. In other words, God's promises, promises to you are not just legal documents. They're meant to manifest. Living. It's a living word. You're meant to feel the miracle in your physical. Amen? Amen. You're created for it. So the Holy Spirit is a part of it, major part of that, obviously, because He's the one that's here. God the Father's in heaven. Jesus went to heaven. Now, I believe He travels back and forth at will because He does still have a physical body. How many know that? Okay? It just doesn't have any death in it, so He still has a legal right to function. I'm talking about just Him Himself, not the body of Christ. He functions through us as well. But the Holy Spirit is here and we need to understand and know Him and take, take advantage of everything that the Father has given us. Luke chapter 24 verse 44 says this, and you, some of these you can jot down because I'm going to kind of go through them quickly and look at them later. I'm going to go down Luke 24, 44 and 45. Jesus said this, He said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law uh, of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Boy, I think there's major revelation there, but I'm not going to stop. Verse 45, and he opened their understanding at, that they might what? Comprehend the scriptures. Say, I'm a, I'm a candidate for that, amen? I'm a candidate for that. You, you can study Greek, Hebrew, and homebrew until you're blue in the face and not know the Lord. You need the Holy Spirit and the presence of God and the nature of God, the teacher, to open up your mind to understand. My mind's a candidate to be transformed. How about yours? Verse 46, then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse 47, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Notice that it's repentance and remission of sins. Repentance is involved. Verse 48, and you are witnesses, witnesses of these things. Verse 49, behold, I send the promise of of my Father upon you, but tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So what do we see? We know from scriptures that Jesus' command to the early church was to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But what else do we know? We know from the scriptures that he told them to wait until they receive power. Now, who wrote that? I mean, who, uh, we know who wrote it, but who spoke that? Whose words are those? Those are Jesus' words. Do you think he's changed his mind? <laughs> Does he still want you to have Holy Spirit manifest power on you? Now, I'm not saying you're going to feel tingles all the time. I'm saying that the Lord wants you to receive this gift. And this gift is a part, it's a part of, but it's a separate experience from salvation. Now, people say, well, I'm born again, I have the Holy Spirit within me. I agree with you. But do you have Him upon you? Do you have Him upon you? Because there's two separate experiences. Do you think these gentlemen looking at the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ while they're having communion, and they had communion for some 40 days after he was raised from the dead, do you think they're struggling about believing who he's raised from the dead? No, they're born again already. They believe that Jesus is the Christ. They believe that he's the Son of God. They believe that he accomplished all of this. So why do they need to wait for more? Because it's a separate experience. It's endowment of power from on high. That part of that endowment, part of that giving, part of you receiving that is that there is an outflow of an overflow and part of that is praying in other tongues. 
Amen? How many have seen tongues and interpretation demonstrated before in a church service? Quite a few of you. Good. How many, well, I won't make you raise your hand. I'll assume you, you that didn't raise your hand were either too lazy to do so <laughs> or you haven't. <laughs> Today was your first opportunity. The gifts of the Spirit are real. People say, well, that's a wild church. They're just out of control. Friend, if you're born again, you believe in a Savior you can't see. So how wild are we? I think sometimes people just need to sit down and think about this a little bit. You believe God came and, and was formed in a virgin. And if you don't, you're not saved. Because it's a must. This is a miraculous thing. So he said, wait for power from on high. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And here, here's another thing. I'm just going to say this because some of you need to hear this. Don't let people intimidate you or shame you for your faith. Now, I'm, not saying you have, I'm not saying you have to rearrange their teeth. I'm just saying, <laughs> be bold, brother and sister. Don't be afraid of them. People say, well, they might do something to me. <laughs> what? Technically, they can't touch you. They can only touch the house you live in. You've already passed from death unto life. <laughs> You've already done it. I already made the transition. How about you? Acts chapter 1, verse 4, and being assembled together with them, this is Jesus, he commanded them not to depart. Does this sound familiar? From Jerusalem, but to wait for the what? Promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 6, and actually, if you look up that word baptized, it means to immerse, submerge, or to be overwhelmed. How many have ever felt an overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit? Okay, sometimes people, I'm just over, people say, well, no, you know, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be emotional in church. Well, where should you be emotional? My question is always, do you think God's in, God is not, he didn't baptize you in lemon juice. He's not sour. Where, how many like to laugh? Sometimes I'm like, I, I'm gone through my work day and, uh, and I, I, you've done a lot of stuff, and so your mind's just kind of working, and you're, how many have ever had kind of, you feel like your mind's just kind of, like, if you had to cram one more thing in there. So I'll go to Facebook, and they have this, they're not all good, but the, most of them are good. They have this uh, uh, Facebook thing called Dry Bar Comedy. How many have seen that? And I, if you so, well, I found out where all you people are going. I know now. <laughs> And I'll watch some of them. And they're not, they're not all Christian, but it's clean. It's supposed to be clean comedy. And I'll just watch them and laugh and laugh. Why? And it's just nonsense stuff. But it's funny life stuff, you know? And, la and, you, and you think I'm like that, but God's not? The Bible says he sits in the heavenlies and laughs at his enemies. You should practice. <laughs> right? It's like people say, oh, the devil's doing this and that, and God's in heaven going, <laughs> look at <laughs> Michael and Graybrook, come look at this. The devil's trying to do this in America. <laughs> people are like, and he goes, he looks down, he goes, look at my church, it's just so serious, they should join me. <laughs> so he sent the Holy Ghost and in Acts 2, they were accused of being drunk because the Lord got tired of you not laughing. <laughs> okay, we'll see it here in a minute. I just, that's great theology. Okay, verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, 
Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You shall receive what? Power. And it says here that the Holy Spirit in verse 8 it, that Holy Spirit, that power comes where? Upon you. That word upon means to rest on a surface. Isn't that wonderful? To rest on a surface. How many have surface in here? The Holy Spirit rests upon you because you're His surface. You're his surface. And he doesn't rest upon you uh, just for good feelings. It's dynamite power. Not on the preacher. I mean, on the preacher too. But I want you to think, well, yeah, I I watched this minister years ago, and he had power. No, you. Okay, point to yourself. Say, "I I have power. Because of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes people that are overconfident will be like, I got the power, you know. People that are uh, more given to being, having, lacking confidence and being a little more uh, self-conscious will be, they'll go the other direction. They'll be like, well, I don't know, maybe I do. If the Lord really rattles me, then I'll know I'll have it. How many are baptized in the Holy Spirit? You have power. You have power. You have power. Go into all the world. Okay. Go into all your world and preach the gospel. People say, I got to do what you do. Not like I do it. Like you do it. Well, uh, I don't know. I'm not a... Tracy Kanoski's back here. I don't see Johnny. But Johnny, Johnny will pray for you in Walmart at the ice cream stand, whatever thing, freezer. And then he'll post it on Facebook how you were healed. People say, well, I don't know if I can do that. Start by opening the door. Start by sharing love with somebody. Just smile. And when you smile on the inside, go, thank you, Lord, that power is on me and it's going to them. People say, they're making us wear masks. Pull the mask down. <laughs> Cut the live feed. Cut the live. No. <laughs> pull, pull the mask down and, and smile and then put it back up if you need to. Amen? I don't care. You know, people say, well, you, you know, I don't want to have to. Some people probably need to wear a mask. Who can, don't go on a mask rampage. Come on. Work with me here. Go on a gospel rampage. Share the love of God. Open, be be ooze with the power of God. People will want to talk to you. They'll want to fellowship with you. They'll want to have conversation with you. As you do, you can start seeding faith in them little by little by little. Come on, I've practiced this. I do this all the time. You don't know. You may not realize I'm doing it, but I'm doing it intentionally. You can do it with your family. You can do it with your friends. You can do it with your coworkers. You can do it with all those around you. You can just very subtly go, you know, I believe you're going to make it and you're going to be a success. You can very subtly say, you don't have to say, thus say at the Lord at the restaurant. You can just, when, when the server is serving you, you can just tell them very uh, uh, calmly, just say, you know, I believe this country is going to come out of this thing. And you say, what are you doing? I am speaking faith where others are going, oh, everything's going to go under. Well, they may, but I'm not. And so when, it, when they are in that place of death, and we didn't participate, you and me, and you out there, when we didn't participate, and we come out of this perfect and complete lacking nothing, what will we be able to do? Come up hither. 
We're going to make it, and let me show you how God worked on my behalf. Why? Because we're endued with what? Power from on high. Amen? Uh, it's upon your surface. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Let's look at the first account. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 says this, and when the day of Pentecost, so what do we know? We know that the apostles were obeying Jesus. They know Jesus is raised from the dead. They're born again. They've been born again. They were probably hot to trot to get out and preach. But he told them to wait and to tarry. So they waited and tarried in the upper room. And as they were waiting and tarrying, they were in one place, in one accord, and they were praying. They were seeking God. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, verse 1, They were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. That word sound actually means a roaring from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. And the word mighty wind is a violent tempest blast. So we have had five trees around this church. Two of them we cut down. Three of them blew over because of a violent tempest blast. How many, was it, what day was that storm that we had blew through Billings anyway? This Monday or Tuesday, somewhere in there? It blew over the last tree over here. So I had Scotty Whiff come chop it up and put it in the garbage can. He's gone. But to give you a picture of what the Holy Spirit did when he poured out on Acts chapter 2, it was what? A violent tempest, a blast, a roaring sound. Now, do you know why all the people went around that building? They came together not because they heard other tongues. They came together because they heard the Holy Spirit blast through that upper room. In other words, how many have ever heard a jet or, uh, man, something go through the air and you go, you start looking. You look for the source of it. That's what happened here. And suddenly that blast came. And it says this, and it filled, which means to cram or make replete. It means to fill up. The whole house where they were sitting. So the Holy Spirit came in, filled up the house. Now look at verse 3. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. So the wind blew in. It crammed the room up with the power of the Holy Spirit. Then all of a sudden they're looking at each other, and they see fire tongues. You say, do you understand that? No. What do I know? It's true. It's supernatural. It's outside the realm of my natural understanding. Verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So what do we see here? The room got filled, and then as they were yielded, they got filled. Do you see that? What was filled up first? The room where they were. What was filled up second? They were. Why? Why? Because they were open to it. See, this is the interesting thing about God. Do you know you can come in this room and reap the benefit of all those who pray in other tongues during the week and are using their faith, and God can be in the room, and he can minister to you. You can feel him tangibly on you, and you can leave the room and go, I don't just don't know where God went. I guess God's only in that building. And the reason why is because when the room was filled, you didn't yield and get filled. But if you yield and get filled, you can just take him with you. (laughs) I don't know about you. I said this before, and I think I messed up the illustration. But you can sit one person next to another person, and that's pretty close. But if you take that person and put them inside the other one, that's real close. I don't know about you, but I am one with the Holy Spirit. I am one with God the Father. I am one with the resurrected Christ. We are one, which makes me a triple threat. How about you? Are you a triple threat? Amen? You need to see yourself as a triple threat. I got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Like years ago, I heard Jesse DePlanis talking about a fact that this prostitute was hitting on him in a hotel room. Hitting on him. She's looking for work. And, uh... We'll leave it at that. So anyway, (laughs) he was talking about this, and she said, she came up to him, she said, are you lonely tonight? Are you all alone? He said, I'm never alone. 
And she's looking around like, you know, where is everybody? What's this guy got, you know? I'm never alone. She said, you're not lonely? He said, no, I'm never alone. And she goes, she said, she said, you're never alone. He said, no, I've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost living inside of me. She looked at him and said, ah, a preacher, and took off running. (laughs) I'm like, how does this stuff happen to him? It's just wild, you know? If you can't do the dry bar comedy, watch Jesse, you'll laugh. All right. <laughs> so he, he didn't stop. He took off after her. Well, you don't want to leave him in sin. I mean, she's destroying her life. She's running. Can you see that? There goes that hooker. The preacher's chasing her. All right. This is theological, I know. All right. So, I don't know. He never finishes the story. So, I don't know if he led her to the Lord or what, but I just thought it was funny. You're never alone. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have God the Father in you. You are, you have the resting power of God with you. He's upon you. Amen. Verse 5 And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews and devout men. From every nation under heaven. Okay? Actually, go back to verse 4. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in what? With other? As the Spirit did what? Who gives the utterance? The Holy Spirit. Who speaks? You do. Who gives the utterance? Who speaks? Who gives the utterance? Who speaks? You say, why do you keep going over that? Because I'm going to give an invitation for people who haven't been filled. And I need you to see this. If you want to receive. If you, or if you struggled in this, I want you to see this. Who gives the utterance? So the Holy Spirit gives the utterance. I don't make up the utterance. The Holy Spirit gives it to me. And I speak. When Mike gave the tongue that he did, I don't understand that language. But we know from Scripture it's the tongues of what? Men and of angels, right? The Holy Spirit gives the utterance, I speak. The Holy Spirit comes upon me. I feel his power tangibly upon the surface. And then utterance comes and I have a stirring on the inside. And from that stirring, by faith, I speak out of my mouth. Do you know you can get filled with the Holy Spirit right where you're at? Right now. All you have to do is say, Holy Spirit, fill me. I'll speak. And you don't even have to bust out yelling. You can just very quietly pray in other tongues. See, there are some of you that are sitting here, and you're wondering why your insides are in turmoil, and it's because the Holy Spirit needs to infill you. You say, what do you mean by my insides? I mean your soul, man. You're constantly in this place. You're like, I can't get control of this thing. And you need power. You need power from the Holy Spirit. It will, I don't know how to describe it other than I can say this. In, in, as I picture it in my heart, as the Lord showed it to me, you just feel like you're all over the place on the inside, like a boat rocking back and forth in rough waters. But if you'd receive the Holy Spirit, that would settle you down. You would be able to, come on, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. You'd be able to pray in an unknown tongue about a situation that you don't know how to pray about in English. <laughs> right? I do this all the time. Well, you're a good preacher. I have a good Holy Ghost. I have a good anointing from a Father who's good. I'm anointed. I got the power of the resurrection upon me to do these things, to live these things. It's not because of me. I have the Holy Spirit functioning in my brain. I graduated high school with a 2.45 grade point average. You can tell. I'm amazing. I mean, colleges were like telling me to stay away. (laughs) People say, but, well, then how do you, how do you do? The Lord, he is good. And he gets all the glory. 
And if you'll function that way, you'll do things and people will look at you and go, how do you do that? And you say, it ain't me, it's God. So verse 5, we see this. We see this truth here that there's these devout men and they come and they're from every place, every nation under heaven. And verse 6, and then this sound occurred. The multitude, when this sound occurred, the multitude came together. Why did they come together? Because the sound occurred. And were confused because everyone heard them speak what? In their own language. Now, this is a gift of the Spirit, and I'm going to explain this next week. But there is a private prayer language, and there is a public tongues language. I know of, I know of people who have prayed in other tongues. <laughs> Just speaking of Jesse, last week, he were, or in the Believer's Convention, he was sharing about how he was in a meeting a few years ago in Hawaii, and there was a lady there from Japan who walked up to him and started talking to him in Japanese, and he, didn't under, he doesn't understand Japanese, but on his TV show, they translated into Japanese, so she thought... <laughs> that, that, he, that he understood Japanese. And the Lord had spoken to him in his prayer time that morning and said, be ready, Jesse, I'm going to move today. And she came up to him and said all these words in Japanese, and he didn't know what to do. And the Lord spoke to Jesse and said, open your mouth and speak. And he said, it sounded like Japanese came out of me. And he spoke in other tongue to her. And then later, the next day, her husband came up to him and said, oh, brother Jesse, can you hear him saying it? <laughs> oh, man, it's so funny. We did not know you spoke such good Japanese. <laughs> and he said, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Anyway, <laughs> he went on. Oh, I guess good. All right. So they heard their own language coming through people they knew did not speak their language. I mean, no, that's a sign and a wonder. And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Verse 9, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Fergie and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Verse 12, so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Verse 13, others mocking said what? They are full of... New wine. I don't know about you, but I never got drunk and spoke in a foreign language. Now, I know all you all are sanctified and you never got drunk. But I'm just telling you right now, I never got drunk and high and I tried them both together and I still didn't speak in a foreign language. You know, people don't come up to you and they go, oh, you know, uh, do you, let me ask you this. Because people argue this. They say, well, they're not drunk in the spirit. Yes, they are. Have you ever walked into a store and heard people speaking in another language? How many of you have had that happen? Did you sit back and go, look at them drunk people? <laughs> Come on, think it through, right? I can't believe they showed up to the store and they're sloppy drunk. And they're talking Spanish. That doesn't make sense, right? That's not what they're talking about. They're talking about that they appeared, they were so filled to overflowing, they were what? Saturated with the Holy Spirit, which brought about a manifestation upon their physical being that made them appear like, man, they are too loose. They must have been sipping on the communion wine or something. That's exactly what it was. Paul says later in Ephesians chapter 5, he says, be not drunk with, but be filled with the In other words, being filled with the Spirit can have the same uh, appearings as being drunk on wine. Amen? Then Philip, oh, go to Acts chapter 8. I'm, I'm out of Acts chapter 2 now. <laughs> Acts chapter 8, you'll see where a passage in verse 4 where it talks about Philip after they were... Um, Scattered all over, went preaching everywhere. Skipping down to uh, uh, through there, verse 5, he preached uh, in the city of Samaria. He preached Christ to them. Verse 6, multitudes came together to heed what he was saying. They saw miracles. Verse 7, unclean spirits came out of many. Verse 8, there was great joy in the city. You say you're skipping over it. Yep, that's the, that's the uh, paraphrase version. Verse 12, 
It says this after they re- believed. Um, verse 12 says, But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Verse 13, Then Simon himself also believed, and when, they, when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the signs and wonders. Verse 15, Who then, who when they came down, we see this in verse uh, 14, Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, what had they done? Are these, are these people born again? Had they, how do we know? For one, we know because they were baptized in water. You don't get baptized unless you believe Jesus, right? So the apostles say in Jerusalem here that they had heard or that the people of Samaria had received the word of God. What did they do? They sent Peter and John to them. Verse 14, Acts 8, 14 is where that is. Verse 15, who when they had come down prayed that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 16, for as yet he had not fallen upon them. Notice that the Lord did not have the people tarry. The Holy Spirit's already here. So what did they pray? They prayed that the Holy Spirit, that the people would receive the Holy Spirit, which is my prayer, that you'd receive the Holy Spirit, right? And then verse 16 uh, for he had, for as of yet he had not he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Are they born again? Yes, but what has not happened? The Holy Spirit has not what yet? Fallen upon them. How many want the Holy Spirit to fall on you? Verse 17, then they laid and they received. (laughs) There it is right there. What happened? They laid hands on them and then what? Received the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Would you stand with me, please? Can I have a, just to either mark, play guitar or keyboard, whatever, something. I want to give you this opportunity. Um, We'll have altar care workers up here later uh, for prayer if you want prayer. But actually, this is what I want to do. I want to do this, and this is going to take some boldness on your part if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it's going to take some boldness on your part if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Because I'm going to utilize your hands out there. Amen. Amen. So if you have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, or on the flip side, if you have had that, but it, you kind of struggle in it, and you can start playing whenever, go ahead, and, um, or you struggle in that and you want help, can you raise your hand for Don't be afraid, please. Okay, there, there, good. Yes, another one. Anybody else? Okay, one back here. So believers, look around, please. Those of you that have prayed in the Spirit, you know. Okay, this is what I want you to do. We're going to have believers. We got one here. We're going to have believers lay hands on the believers. Amen? So I just want you, now, you don't got to, you know, as a believer, you just put your hand on their shoulder, okay? You don't got to, like, you know, bear hug them, all right? And so go ahead, raise your hand if that's you, if you you want that, raise your hand right now, and and you believers, go to them right now, please, and just put a hand on it, women with women, if you would, um, unless it's your spouse, men with men, um, uh, and just go to them, and I'm going to pray from here, and I'm going to... Believe God with you that the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. And then you're, remember, remember now, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. He gives you the utterance. Somebody say, I speak. So say it with me. Holy Spirit gives me utterance. I speak. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray a prayer in English. And then every one of us that's filled with the Holy Spirit or wanting to receive, we're all going to pray out in other tongues right afterwards. Those of you that are watching online, if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I want you, and you want to in your house right now, and we want to hear from you when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, I want you to put your hands on yourself. Because nobody, unless you have somebody there who is with you that believes this, and they'll believe with you, and receive where you're at. So Father, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. Holy Spirit, 
I ask you to fall right now on everyone that is here to receive. Everyone watching by Facebook right now that wants to receive. I ask you to fall right now where they are in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for doing it. And you're giving utterance right now. Now, saints, let's pray. Sererosh. Aranamando breva basti kisisi. Alefistio sombre sere so copra. Avambre jedo bradico so corge. Elevrimene so rosis die zapra. Afandro broco. If it's just one word, speak it out. Prefo batise sendora. Alavra bagasto sechera robusta. Evri berecosa valambra. Eveno no mandere vrisi custuse. I fristo sondra mai sera soco. Evenamando. Ando bredigio drasa, digio drasa, digio drasa, masiru cobroto. Receive fresh fire in the name of Jesus. O brosto, e livri biscusu, ala frambana manzobai, e bidisu cusicuro shitiriata, ananenendo da brevo boste sakaya, ala vrebo shikisi vidembro bosoto posis. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, those of you that have never spoken in tongues, how many you you, you just prayed out in other tongues? Raise your hand, please. Yes, awesome. Anybody else? Yes? We're, those that are working, yes, right here? Yes, all right. So we got two for sure. Anybody else? Speak out of your heart. Out of your heart. Those of you that are working with somebody and they haven't spoken yet, go ahead and talk to them personally and see if you can help them right where they're at. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Prosogo. Alaranamanjo brezeveredosho. Alava soko proso progazitishisia. Alava. Lord, in, inside of them, by your Holy Spirit right now, I thank you that you're welling up, welling up, stirring in them, stirring in them, stirring in them, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, o braba stiku sukuro braba, ala vrama joro bro stiki shirio sotoro. O mane sekera brase, avala robro sokopo shikiti. Hallelujah. All right, everybody, if you'd look at me, hallelujah. So, Rick, if you want to, do we have an altar care uh, on this side too? So, both my altar care workers, if you'd come up both sides here, if you did not pray out yet, and you need more time, because I'm going to wrap up the service here. And you need more time to, 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 uh, to be able to be worked with. We have altar care workers on both sides here that are trained in this that will be able to help you with that. If you're watching online and you prayed in other tongues or maybe you didn't, you want more information, please contact us either via the website or via Facebook, um, either one. Uh, and we'll get information to you, work with you what we, with, with, with everything that we have. If you were baptized in the Holy Spirit or rebaptizing the Holy Spirit today, I want you to, as you're going out, you'll see a welcome table. There are books there called Why Tongues. It's by Kenneth E. Hagin. I want you to get it. I want you to get it. Amen? Come on, how many love this? Come on, let's just pray in the Holy Ghost again. Rise up, army, in the name of Jesus. Refose, you have resurrection in you. You have resurrection in you. You have resurrection in you. Come on, some of you got teenagers, you don't know how to pray for them. You need to go in their room and just pray in other tongues. You've got situations you're dealing with, you don't know how to pray. You need to pray in other tongues over those situations. You just need to go to Romans 8 and say, Lord, I don't know how to pray about this situation as I should. I'm just going to pray in other tongues. Amen. You have decisions that need to be made in your life. Pray in the Spirit over them. I don't care how high up you are in society or how low you are. It doesn't matter to me. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen? <laughs> how many know God's good? Now, next Sunday, I'm going to explain what tongues is even more uh, uh, on a private prayer language level. It is so vital. It is so vital. This, how many enjoy the presence of God in here? Guys, we are a tongue-talking church. Praying. We pray every Tuesday from 10 to 11, and we pray a lot in other tongues. 
You say, why? There's a group of us that comes together and prays because we're praying out mysteries and secrets, hidden things, not obvious to our mind. We're affecting the atmosphere of this place because we're the body of Christ. Amen.